Welcome to this video on what is actually a beautiful fall day in southern Spain. It really, really is. But it's not that beautiful for my angrecoids. Neither is it for me because they have to come inside. So I've been dithering about this because we've got like three nights in a row where the temperatures will drop down to 10 degrees and then they will rise again up to 14 for an extended period of time based on what I can see on the weather forecast. So I have been playing the shuffle game in my head, thinking that maybe I can cover them up with a blanket like I did last night where it dropped to 10 degrees Celsius and get away with it for a few more nights because the days are kind of beautiful. However, the temperature will increase simply because we're going to get clouds and rain. And with the rain, even though the temperatures are okay and mild at night, the days are not going to be that bright and windy and all that stuff and warm for the young gray to dry out. And then eventually they have to come in and they will be absolutely soaking wet if the forecast is to be believed. Yes, I know, I'm dithering, I'm talking to you, standing in the sunshine, enjoying the view. I'd love to see these angroikoids outside. So, the decision has been made, I'm going to bring them in, even though I would love for them to benefit from that beautiful rain that we've got coming. The risk is too high if they're soaking wet and my temperatures are not going to rise enough during the day. The deep south has somewhat been dismantled. Some orchids have been shuffled around, but not by much. Schweinfortiano now is over here to the right. You can see it right there. And then Kimi Holcoglossum Kimbiliano is over here. I've made some space for us because I will be setting up the camera to the left right here so that we can see what happens with the root system as I pull the orchids out of the hedge. Now, they moved out in May, which is four weeks later than what they normally would move out in because we had such a terrible spring that April, it was impossible. It was far too cold. Never mind the rain. It was the temperatures that I could not have these orchids outside during the month where they normally would move outside in 2022. So they didn't have as long a time span outdoors as they did in the previous years. I don't know what the root growth is going to be like. I've already put a pot there. Well, you'll see. Let me set up the camera. The staging area is ready because then they need a good cleanup before they go inside. Wish me luck. Okay, my first assessment is that my bossery is going to be the easier one to start off with. You know, let's get the Let's get the groove on, get a feel for what's going on. This one doesn't have as many branching roots and the roots are pretty much single sticking out. Got a gorgeous root tip right here. And I can see this root right here has grown exponentially into the hedge, but it's loose. This is a beautiful root tip right here. And this root, we'll find out if that has grown, looks a little bit shriveled but it's loose. So that's pretty easy. Let's give it a goo. I'll bring my little support pot over and gently pull her out. Yep, that's a good one to get our bearings with. Okay, no root tip on, oh, we have, oh boy. Yep, we've got a root tip over there as well. I'm going to minimize the abrasions I don't want root tips to touch anything. Okay, there we go. I'm just gonna put it on the staging area <laughs> and I'll show you what we got. <laughs> oh. Just a moment to geek out. This is an extension. This is an extension. The root back here tried to extend and then stopped. That's fine. Saying that now, two new ones came out of the stem for 2022. Amazing. Absolutely amazing. My goodness. What a beautiful sight. Now, unfortunately, I'll be wiping away the beautiful glaucus effect that I enjoy so much on these leaves. Just enough to get some of the dust off so that they can cope with the lack of light indoors. Oh, if my voice sounds remorseful, that's because it is. These are such beautiful plants. 
and I am so selfish in wanting to grow them, captivated like this. All these roots should be finding a place to climb up on, to grab a hold of, to just grow, grow, grow indefinitely, without being rudely interrupted, without being ripped away from a habitat every six months. Oh my goodness. But you know what I'm going to just focus on now? is to make sure that she blooms for us. And we are early enough. I'm not concerned. I mean, bud blast can happen at any moment because of a draft. I have to time the temperatures of the outdoors with the indoors before when the buds form so that I don't risk bud blast. So that's sort of the, my strategy. As soon as a temperature matches indoors and outdoors, I open the doors. If the breeze is a little bit cooler, I keep the terrace doors somewhat shut so that the cold breeze doesn't exactly hit come into their line of fire. It's a huge operation during the winter to get these to bloom, but at least they're not in bud when we are moving them in, like other orchids that I've already moved inside that are in bud, and I'm just hoping they won't blast after forming the buds outside. Do a little bit of gardening at the base. We don't need all this humidity enhancers for the winter. It's going to be humid and cold enough. So we'll just remove the maiden hair fern. I'm telling you, my patio looks a mess. The last 72 hours, <laughs> it's been like everything just goes on the floor. Make sure I keep my ceramics in the pot though. <laughs> I don't mind the excess moss around the orchid top. That'll figure its way out or in or it'll die, whatever. That's fine. That's not part of the whole operation here. It's mainly around the stem. Let's see if we can't tidy it up a little bit. Oh, wow. And then we can analyze the growth. We can see how she did. I don't want to turn her around for reasons. As you can see, everything is pointing in our direction. <laughs> but she, of course, is leaning towards the major light source, which was the white facade. But we have ourselves substantial growth. All this bit here is new. This whole trunk up here is new. We started off with the remnants, the blemishes of some mealybug damage. This was 2020 right here, 2021, and this is 2022. Considering she had a month less to progress, I am happy with the result and now she can go inside. Look at this. Look at this. Beautiful metallic against that bright kryptonite green. Oh. It's a sight to behold. It just is. Out of the light and into the darkness. Ooh, let's do the Crestwood Tomorrow Star. All right, same principle here. This is not going to be as straightforward. So they had calcium and magnesium this morning and it's already empty. Wow. It's not hot enough for evaporation. They are drinking up like crazy at the moment. Okay, out of camera, I'm releasing the Velcro that was holding up new leaves just to give them stability while they get all their nutrients so that they can stay up strong instead of flopping over because that was a problem early spring. They were growing and the cell structure wasn't strong enough. So we've done that. Now the same as before applies to check and see that roots are loose before we start pulling them out. That's easy, that's easy. Root tip there. I know you can't see what I'm seeing. So I'm just gonna talk you through. That feels loose, not sure though. Here is a point of tension because I have two branchings. I gotta remember that. That was a problem early spring. These all feel loose. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, we have new branches that are different from before. Let's see if I can... I might, I might snap a joint on a branch right here. Yep, already snapped. Yeah, that snapped. Oh, what a shame. <clears throat> Watch the spike, Nina. They are loose, but they're kind of tangled up in each other. Let's see if we can only keep that one casualty. This root is causing me issues as I pull. Seems to be everything's okay over here. Yeah, that's right here. But you've already snapped, so why? This root tip is loose. It's not attached, but it's the one that's at the point of contention. Okay. It looks like I'm pulling part of the hedge towards me but they're loose. Okay. Yeah, they're getting in each other's way. There's that. This one's loose. Where is the hang up? Can you see the root tips coming out? Oh, gorgeous. Here we come, I think. Oh my goodness, you guys, it's a sight. It's a beautiful sight. I will only know if this footage is good once I've downloaded it. Oh my goodness, isn't that gorgeous? Oh, stop right there. Wow. Isn't this a sight of beauty? Isn't this just amazing? Let's just stop and enjoy for a moment. This root tip just stopped growing. I know you can't see it. I'll show you when we get to the staging area. All these new roots. This is all new branching, all of this. This is a brand new root from the main stem and all the new tips at the end. They extended after they stopped growing during the winter of 21. Same here. Oh, you guys. I'm telling you, this is my kryptonite. <sighs> okay, let's get a cleanup going. Thankfully, it's not a windy day. It's like a luxury for me to see these roots. Wow. All right. It's a thing of beauty. Even some leaf blemishes, I don't care. It's such a beautiful, beautiful orchid. Look at all those green tips coming up, contrasted color. Oh, my heart. Beautiful, okay. Let's have a closer look. Thank you so much for joining me on this. The fact that you're here keeps me focused. I'm not rushing planning ahead, thinking slowly, seeing what you might be interested in. Here we have a root that completely stopped growing right there. The rest of it is still alive. 
so I can snip that off. Yeah, I'm going to do some grooming now because, of course, should nothing go wrong, I'm hoping to be able to bring this one back outside in the spring of 2023. And then I like to have a good record of what my roots looked like as they went in. So I do snip off what is dead just to make sure that I remember that the dead is already gone. Whatever happens during the winter is then what I can assess in the spring. And usually when the spring, when we come out again, all the beautiful root tips here will have stopped growing, unfortunately, and some will end up looking desiccated like this. But seeing as we're dealing with angrecoids, yeah, we can see the ones that are obviously dead stop growing desiccated because they're like twigs. But I made a mistake early this year and when I brought them out, I thought something was dead and cut into green and that's what I'm going to do my best to avoid. So I learned my lesson back then. I was being a little bit too radical. Now this one is still desiccated at the tip, but I'm not going to go up to where it is shriveled because that could be all green in there and we're going to maintain that. Moving around to this side, see this one is extremely shriveled as well, but it is not dead. This one has life in it, even though it looks desiccated. Oh, you're so beautiful. I love you so much. If you saw one of my cleaning up videos, this box that looked so out of place, it only serves the purpose of me not walking and brushing against the root tips. So yeah, here we are. They're safe. Can you imagine the shock coming out of paradise and coming into what I consider orchid hell? <laughs> I'm sorry for being that radical, but yeah, that's how I feel when it comes to my orchids. Okay. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a like. If you want to continue watching the progress of the spikes, how about subscribing? Hit the notification bell. We also do live streams. Make sure that you hit all notifications so that you also get the alerts for the live streams. And let's hope that we bring them safely through the winter and maybe still get some blooms. That'd be awesome. I appreciate your time so, so much and your support. Have yourselves a fabulous day on one condition though, please, that you do stay safe. Take care. Bye.